Hi everybody, this is Brendan, Common Motor Collective, that's common-motor.com, on the internet. Today, we're going to be rebuilding a rear brake on a CB450. Uh, this same style rear brake shows up on the CB450, CL450, the CB500T, uh, CB500K, the four cylinders, the CB550K, and F model. So, it's what I call the middle sized or medium sized drum brake assembly that showed up on these mid 70s Hondas. Uh, most notably identified by these two pivots here. If your brake has the two pivots with the cotter pins in it, it is this style of brake. If it doesn't, it's probably a smaller style brake used on the 350s and 360s and 400 four cylinders and things like that. So, we're going to yank this apart. We're going to put some new brake shoes in it and we're going to show you how to do, do it right. It's a pretty simple rebuild, but it's definitely necessary on uh, these old bikes because, well, quite frankly, with this old friction material here on the, the shoes, it tends to delaminate from the actual metal frame. And of course, that means you have metal on metal contact and your brakes don't work like they're supposed to. So let's rebuild them and have good, safe braking. If you look real closely here, that says HM on it. For Honda Motors, that's an easy way to identify that this is an original set of brake shoes that was in this bike. Or we could be optimistic and think that someone took this to the dealership and had it replaced there back in the day, but chances are probably not. So if you see that stamp on the uh, shoe, it's probably the original shoes on the bike from 40 plus years ago. So that's definitely a sign that they should be changed out. So let's tear into this and get it taken apart. All right, so here's what we're working with right here. I'm gonna point out the new parts we're gonna use. These are brand new brake shoes with replacement springs. It's our CMC part number 1015. These are high quality European made brake shoes. These are not mystery brake shoes coming from mystery place that we don't know what they're made from and who made them, etc. So again, Common Motor, we always have the highest quality parts we can get for the bike. So here's what we're gonna go in with. And we like these because it actually comes with the replacement spring. So well, these will go in, but for now I'm gonna put them aside. And we're going to take apart our actual existing brake assembly. Of course, this is off the wheel. We're going to get back to the wheel in a minute. This is a, a single pivot brake shoe setup. And what that means is, I flip this over, this is where our the rod that went to our brake pedal attaches to. And as we push the brake pedal, the rod moves, right? Well, let's see what's happening on the back side here. Here's the pivot. And as I move the rod, the brakes expand outwards. And that's where your braking action comes from, is from this single pivot moving along, while up here they just kind of, that's like the hinge where they, they move back and forth on. Uh, taking these apart might seem tougher than it really is, and I'll show you a couple tricks on how to take it apart here real quick. First thing I want to point out, however, is on this side, because this is where we need to start. Our brake arm is actually marked for a location on the brake pivot right here. You see there's a black dot here and a black dot here. Well, I took the marker and I, I emphasized that there's actually a, two tiny punch marks that are in both pieces and those punch marks are supposed to line up with one another. Also, we have the the, uh, the gap here on the where the arm clamps to, there's a flat spot on the cam. And once we get this off, you'll see that. But it's important to note the punch marks because when you put it back together, you want to line the punch marks up. Uh, if you don't see the punch marks, you can always do something like this. Just take your Sharpie and you can make your own your own mark. You can say, hey, well, this is where it was before I took it apart, and that's where it's gonna be when I put it back together. You can make your own mark and line things up, and that's a, a quick trick on putting parts back together and aligning things. So I'm gonna pull this bolt out, we'll take this off, and then we'll, we'll flip this guy over. Probably sure that this thing has not ever been taken apart since it left the factory. Well, it's coming out pretty easy. So. Fingers. There we go. Let's make them on out. Got to take the bolt all the way out. All right, bolt this out. Here comes the arm. And a lot of times you can grab by the end and just kind of wiggle it off. I'm wiggling up and down. You can see how it's starting to slide. Sometimes it's easy to get underneath it with a screwdriver. Just kind of gently pry it. There it goes. Okay, it is about to pop off. All right, and there's our arm, right? So I'll just take my bolt, I'll put it back in here, put it aside, come back to him later. Okay, as I was pointing out, or I was mentioning earlier, this cam has, like, we have all the teeth around here, right? And right here is 
kind of a flat area where there's no teeth, so that's going to help with your alignment marks. Also, if you look really closely on here, you can see that there is an arrow on this dust shield here. That arrow, if it lines up with this other casting mark here, which, let me pull this dust piece off. Ooh, look at that. See that mark there? That arrow lines up with the mark that says the brake shoes are worn, but they're almost usually never worn. So I'm going to take them off and put them aside. And that leaves the pivot here. There's also this little felt dust ring in here, which I'm going to gently pry out because I want to use it again. And all it is is like a dust shield to keep things dirt and crap from getting in there. Come on. There we go. Nice and gentle with it. We should be able to reuse this over again. If you don't have one of these or a deteriorate, you know, just make one. So all it is is kind of a, a dust shield, and that's the felt ring. All right. On the back side there. So what that does is it released the, uh, we can pull that pivot out here, but i got to take these guys off first. The cotter pins. And the cotter pins are definitely something that when we put this back together, we're going to put new ones in. Uh, if you don't have cotter pins, you can always pick them up at your local hardware store. It's an easy enough thing to, to round up. Get in here and get these guys bent out. Come on. Exciting world of cotter pins on video here. Come on. Sorry for shaking the table so much. We gotta get this thing out of here. Alright, one. You see this plate? It's kind of loose. It's gonna come off. Second one out of here. There we go. Let's see if we can do a better job with this one. Take it out. There we go. Look at that. Nice and clean. Cutter pins. Should always throw them away, put new ones in. All right. The plate comes off. Put it aside. Now we're ready to actually take the shoes off of the pivot. I'm gonna pull this off. We're gonna try to yank these guys off together. And one thing I like to do is kind of get the screwdriver under the pivots here and kind of work them up on the pivot like that. All right, here's the fun part. I can get that guy off of that spring there. Come on. So you're probably wondering, why don't I just let go of the springs? Well, that's actually a little bit tougher than doing what I'm doing. The springs are really on there, usually. We can get one of these guys wiggled up. Or both of them wiggled up and out of the way. All right, see, here's our pivot. I'm going to open it up so I can push my pivot out. There we go. Took him out. Now these guys are just gonna come off like that. So, all right. They're gonna go on, go on in a similar manner, so. Versus, the springs are just too hard to take off. So, these guys are trash, or you can go ahead and recycle them because there's a lot of aluminum on it. Um, some other brake shoes cause you to reuse the springs, but again, ours, with the replacement springs. So here's what we are left with. It's the actual pad or the mounting plate and our pivot. I want to point out a couple details to you on, on both the plate and the pivot. And I'll show you on the pivot here first. Honda does this a lot where you have a, a shaft and in that shaft you'll see this little groove that's kind of recessed. So what that groove is is a grease reservoir. I Meaning that this thing needs to be all greased up because it moves and pivots. So we're gonna clean all the stuff off and that's exactly what we'll do is we'll grease it up with disc brake caliper grease. So we're gonna use this very sparingly in a very particular way, but that's exactly what we need to fix this, to finish this caliper right, or I'm sorry, drum and drum plate and drum shoes correctly. Same thing here, we look on these uh, mounts here. Those are, those are grease reservoirs, that means these now, these shafts need to have grease on them for the uh, 
the brakes. But again, we have to do it very sparingly in a very particular way. So I'm going to go into the parts washer. I'm going to get this stuff all cleaned up and we'll come back here to the table and uh, we'll start reassembling the brakes. All right, we are back from the parts washer. We have all of our pieces nice and clean. Our brake panel, our pivot, all the other pieces, we're going to go back in the system here. So our next thing is to apply our brake caliper grease. Now this is available at the auto parts store. Um, I like the synthetic stuff myself. And you can see how big and gloppy it is. We are not going to use that much of it. And the first thing I'm going to work on is actually this pivot here. I'm going to apply a grease to a couple of areas very strategically. One is right here in the center. Remember I showed you where that groove was, the grease reservoir? That's exactly where this is going. Additionally, I'm going to point out, get my pointer here, this face here. This face rubs on this surface right here on the, the backing plate. So we're going to make sure we put a little bit of grease on that as well. Not too much. We want to be a little sparing with this grease here because the last thing we want to do we want to keep the grease where it needs to go, but we don't want the grease to ooze out and get near our, our friction material of the brake shoe. So it's kind of a fine line that we're working with here. So we have a little bit on there. And I'm going to take this guy, and I'm just going to drop it in there so you can do better for the camera. And you're going to see that, yes, brake grease is going to kind of start to ooze out. There it is. Yeah, it's oozing out there. That's okay for now because we're going to mop it up. On that side, we're good. All right, I'm just gonna take my finger and mop up that excess. I'm gonna put it right here on the flat so that because this is also a rubbing area. We have plenty of grease to work with. So that one right there as well. Just gonna put some on the flats. We'll take our overflow, put it right there. Okay, I'll leave that put for a second. I'll grab my paper towel. And very importantly, I'm going to wipe up that, any of that excess grease that kind of spilled over here, I'm going to mop up. Because that's the kind of grease that will break off and go into the, uh, on the friction material here. So make sure to get all that excess grease wiped up. We want, it, we want this to be super tidy. Like the, it, it should appear that there's no grease there, basically. I'm saying so. Uh, we might have to... Right, that's pretty good. I might dab that up a little more in a minute here, but for now, that's a good spot. So we're, we're greased up there. We have some grease on our surfaces. And to keep that in place, I'm going to flip this back over. I'm going to put our, our arm back on. So I'm going to turn that around so you guys can see that better. Remember we had our, our little dust felt. I'm going to put him back in place there. We had our, this is kind of another dust cover. We had that. Uh, again, you can see we have that bigger notch in it right there. So that's going to line up with the bigger notch on our, our piece, just like that. Come on. It's got one sweet spot. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Perfect. Oops. Sorry. See, that's where our arrow, you see the arrow right there? But we're just going to go for the mark, so that's all in the right spot there. That's good. And now we're going to put on our, our brake arm here. And before I actually put it on, I'm going to use one of my other favorite products, which is anti-seize compounds. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know how much I like anti-seize compound. Just going to take a little bit here on the pick. I'm going to put it on the inside of the splines here. So in the future, we can take this piece off. So go there. Just 
me get it all, all up in there. I'm also going to put it on my bolt too, make sure he's going to be able to come out in the future as well. I don't need very much on the anti seize, so get it all lubed up there. That should be fine for now. So if you look back where we when we took this apart, we, we pointed out the, the little button or little uh, little bullet points to you. I'm sorry, the punch marks. That's what I want to say is punch mark. Punch mark there, see it? And we have our punch mark here on our arm. So we're gonna line that up, drop the arm back on. Something like that. There's our anti seize. We can put that on our bolt. Big tail here. And well, look at that, how it lined right up. It's supposed to, so it's a little hard to see, but it did line up. All right, that's done. Anti seize on the bolt. Put that guy in place and we'll get it tightened up and we'll flip this thing back over. We're going to apply a little bit more of our, our caliper grease again. This time we're going to apply it to the pivots here. We'll rotate that there on that side so you can see. Where that's our pivots where our, our brakes are mounted. And again, they have that recessed groove in the body there to act as a reservoir. So I'm just going to paint a little bit on there and use my fingers to kind of smear it around because it's, again, easy to apply too much grease to these things. And as we push the, the actual brake shoes on here, it will squeeze down and give us some grease on these little flats here, flat here and the flat here again where the, the shoes are going to be rubbing. So I just want to get that all around. I want to make sure I'm good and clean, not too much grease on them. That's probably plenty right there. That's what I'm missing right there. I know you guys can't see that right now, but... So we're good and coated right there. I'm gonna do a little bit of mopping up with it. Okay, so here are fresh brake shoes. I went and changed my gloves to a fresh set because um, I had anti-seize and brake uh, caliper grease on them. Right now with all this procedure, we wanna be very, very careful not to get any grease or anything on the friction surface of the brake. So right now, uh, it's time to be very diligent with this stuff and be very careful. If you end up do getting some stuff on the, the friction surface, uh, your best course of action is to take some brake cleaner and uh, spray that material down and, and wipe it up as best you can because it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll affect your brake. So we want to keep things as clean as we can. Okay, so got our springs here and we're going to show you the trick to doing this that makes it way easier than, uh, than how you think. I'm going to take my spring, I'm going to put the hook side in like that. Same deal here, hook side in. Face the brakes apart from each other. Come on. Like that. And the same deal. Let's get that in there. I'm gonna pull the brakes so they're like that. Kind of intentional with each other. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two brakes, I'm gonna pull them apart, try to slam them onto the, the, the body here as best I can by myself. So, I'm bring this one over. Let's see if we can do this as elegantly as we can. You ready? Those two lined up first because those are the important ones. All right. Side's going down. one side in place first. There we go. Almost there. Boom. We're on. We're locked in here. Let's work on this one there we go. Down in place like that. Way easier than trying to put them in place and then pull the springs in and doing it like that. So you see where our brick caliper grease is kind of rubbing on the flats there. 
That's good. I'm gonna probably wipe up a little bit of that extra on the sides. But other than that, that looks really good. You guys see that, that grease in there? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get that all mopped up too. I don't want that stuff oozing and flying around. So again, it, it's really important to be diligent about getting all that uh, grease out of there. At least the excess stuff that overflows because it will cause problems later. So let me get that cleaned up and we'll come back here in a minute. So I got my, uh, cleaned up my extra extra grease that was sitting here and the pivots. You no, know, I obviously, I put too much on. And so I spent too much time cleaning it up. So again, the grease, a little bit goes a long way with the grease. Our next step is gonna be our plate here. Drop him on, drop him on, and then uh, come with the cotter pins. The cotter pins I'm coming in from the, the top side. Down, just like that. Another one down, top side, just like that. Let's see if we can get these guys spread out like they're supposed to be. Just like that, just like that. And that all the way around like that. Same thing with this one. One. Two. All right. So that is installed. You flip it over, you can see our our motion, right? Now, if you get to this point, you got to put your lever on, and you find your lever is over here. It says that this thing, our, our, our rotor is 180 degrees out of phase. And well, if you have to move it, you can literally just do this. Pop it to the other side. A lot of guys put it together and like, I did it backwards. I was like, well, you know, you just rotate it and put it back where it needs to be. So, just as a heads up. Not even, I know, when we're talking about keep being diligent about keeping it clean. And you can see right there, I got a little spot of, of grease on the... Uh, the friction material. So I'm going to take some brake cleaner and clean that. And uh, our last part of this whole equation is to actually go and work on the drum and the wheel. So we're going to move the camera and uh, hopefully get that done. But I'm going to pick a little bit of this right here. Roll that like that. Clean paper towel. Try to mop it up clean. Nice and clean, no grease. Does that side look? You know, we'll go ahead and clean it a little bit too. Just some brake cleaner. I like to use brake cleaner very sparingly. It's mean stuff, you know. I like to spray all over stuff, but personally, I I'd much rather be sparing with it. Let's see how fast it evaporates looking a lot better. All right, that looks good. All right, so we're done here on the actual plate. We'll go over to the drum and we'll start uh, getting the drum ready. So here is our, our brake drum itself, which built into the hub of the wheel. And this is exactly how it, it came out of the bike. We have a little bit of grease here we need to clean off. We've got some brake dust in here. Uh, make sure to not inhale that stuff. And what we're gonna be working on is, is this right here. This is actually the drum surface where the friction material of the shoe rubs. And over time what happens is this, this surface gets kind of glazed up. So I'm just gonna take some, some 100 grit sandpaper here and I'm gonna sand this drum just to break the glaze. You can see right now it's kind of mirror shiny. I'm gonna go around it and it's gonna get a dull gray finish. And all we have to do is take a little bit off the top. We're not taking a ton of material off. We're just trying to take that shiny off to get back down to some base iron and then we'll spray that with some brake cleaner, get it all wiped out, and it should be done. So I'm gonna start sanding, and you'll see the uh, you'll see the change here pretty quick. You can already see there's a, there's a there's a, a visual change from kind of being mirrored to being that dull gray, and it, already, it does feel different on my glove here. My glove is dry. So I just work my way all the way around until I get that nice even finish on it. It doesn't take very much effort. It's not a very difficult level of sanding. So that's where we are. And my next step, I'm going to use a little bit of brake cleaner. 
Again, uh, be careful with this. Wear gloves, wear safety glasses, and be very careful about it because I want to take this all the dirt out of here. And it's stuff you can push the button too hard and it goes everywhere in your face. Your goal is to try to get this as clean as you possibly can. Now, get all this grease and old brake residue out of here so everything is in tip top shape. So I'm probably going to have to get a fresh can of brake cleaner here because it's a little bit. Okay, so our hub is now cleaned and sanded and degreased and ready to go back together. Our brake uh, plate and brake shoes are ready and I mean, it's literally just dropping it back on and we're going to mount it on the bike. And that concludes the rear brake rebuild on a Honda CB450, CL450, CB500T, CB500F, CB550F, CB500K. Yeah, yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, uh, this is Brendan with the Common Motor Collective. That's common-motor.com on the internet. Thanks for watching. I want everybody to know out there in uh, Honda land that we talk to vintage Honda owners around the globe every day. You're not alone in your pursuits of getting your bike back on the road, and we're here to help. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.